And I get to introduce the next speaker. His name is Charles Clarkson. He's the, uh, and well, that's a title, SMP, which is the Senior Medical Patrol Representative for the Jewish Family Services of Middlesex County. He will explain how to detect and how to report Medicare fraud and related health care scams. And without further ado, here's Charles. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, he got the title a little wrong, so I'll correct him. It's uh, Charles Clarkson. I'm also a New York attorney, so don't hold that against me. But I am the project director of a federally funded program called the Senior Medicare Patrol of New Jersey. And my job is quite simple. I go out throughout the state of New Jersey and basically give presentations like this on how to prevent, detect, and report Medicare fraud, waste, and abuse. Uh, the woman handing out the bags is Val Escudero. Val is our new hire to do Spanish-speaking presentations. So if any of you know of any Spanish groups or Spanish clubs and like to have a free presentation, we're free. We come out and we will do it for you anytime, day or night. So thank you for coming and let's get started. You know, um, in the year 2000, I was general counsel to Beatrice Foods. Many of you might have remembered Beatrice Foods. It was a very large multinational food company. And the company was sold. Of course, I had something to do with that. And I was out of a job. And I said to my wife, don't worry, honey. I'll just take off a year and go back to work. Well, I never went back to work. In 2005, five years now, my wife was elected president of the Jewish Family Services. And one day she came to me and she said, honey, and I knew I was in trouble. She said, honey, you know, I have a grant at the agency called the Senior Medicare Patrol and the project director just quit. You know, you're not doing anything. You should take that job. And I said, what are you talking about? I don't know anything about Medicare or Medicaid. And I was still far too young to be eligible. Then she said one more thing. She said, honey, you're driving me crazy. Get the hell out of the house. So here I am out of the house. Okay. So let's talk about Medicare. Okay. Is there anybody in the room not on Medicare? Okay. I thought so. Okay. So let me start off with a question. How much money do you think Medicare loses in one year to fraud, waste, or abuse? $80 billion a year. And who's paying for that? You are. Comes out of your tax dollars. And you know, right now, the statistics say that Medicare, even though they won't be bankrupt, they will not be able to pay their full claims by 2031. That's only seven years from now. So something is going to change. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's going to go higher in cost and premiums. But fraud is a big component. Now, we're never going to stop fraud. But if we can reduce the amount, we'll save billions of dollars. And my job is to teach you how to do it, okay? So I'm gonna start off with another question. How many of you in this room right now are carrying your Medicare cards? Do not carry your Medicare cards with you. <laughs> Ever, with two exceptions. You're going to a new doctor? Bring it with you. Going to a hospital? Bring it with you. Otherwise, leave it at home. You don't need it. And you know what the response always is? What if I'm in an emergency? I won't have my card. Well, I'm going to give you an example. I'm driving down the New Jersey Turnpike. We all know where that is. And I'm in a car accident. And I'm rendered unconscious. What's going to happen? 
the police will come, the ambulance will come, and they'll transport me to the nearest hospital that will treat me. Do they look in my pocket to see if I have medical insurance? To see if I have a Medicare card? No. You don't need to carry the Medicare card with you. You don't carry your Social Security card. At least I hope you don't. You know? Leave it at home in a safe place. And what I mean by that is don't hide it where you can't find it. That won't help you. Okay? But other than that, don't carry your card with you because most fraud happens because the card is lost, stolen, or copied. Now, about five or six years ago, you all got new Medicare cards, right? Remember that? What was the difference between the old Medicare card and the new Medicare card? That's right. They removed the Social Security number. Why? Fraud. And you guys are making it easy because you're carrying your card with you. You know, even though the Social Security is not on the card, the card still has value. Do you know how most people find out that their Medicare number is compromised? They go get a preventive test, like a colonoscopy for all you gentlemen out there. I had one three weeks ago, never doing it again. It was the worst experience. I mean, not the test, the prep. Oh, my God. To sit on the toilet for eight straight hours is not fun. Anyway, that's an aside, okay? So really, you don't need to carry your Medicare cards with you. You can always give them the information later. So please leave the cards at home. Now, that Medicare number, now it's called a Medicare Beneficiary Identifier, is a random let numbers and letters, 10 long, okay? But it still has value. So I was talking about getting a colonoscopy. So you get your colonoscopy. The claim goes to Medicare. Medicare denies the claim. And you say, what? Why would you deny? It's a preventive service. I have the right to get it. Oh, you used your, you got a colonoscopy last year. And you said, no, I didn't. And then you realize your number is compromised. Now, since we have a new system in place, a randomly generated number, I'm going to ask you a question. If I lost my credit card, and we all have gone through this, right? How many, does anybody ever go through their whole life without having a fraudulently used credit card? I didn't think so. So if you have a credit card and you lost it, what would you do? You'd call up the credit card company and they would issue, right, a new card. No problem. Well, now we can do that with Medicare. If your number is compromised and you personally call up Medicare and say, my number is compromised and sometime the agent will fight you, they said, let's wait for more fraud to occur. So stupid, you know? But tell them the number is compromised and at your request, they're supposed to issue a new card and a new number. You know, in the past, people would call and say, it's compromised but it was a social security number. And you got a new card, but you had the same number. What good was it? So now we don't have to worry about that anymore. The next thing you have to do is when you get a statement from Medicare, and be honest, how many people take the time to read it? <laughs> oh, all right, not bad. About a third of you. Most people don't read it. Why? This is not a bill. Stupid. It is a bill, only you're not paying for it. You know? And it says at the bottom, you owe nothing. In the garbage it goes. If you don't read your Medicare summary notice or your explanation of benefits, if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, any fraud, waste, or abuse, they get away with it. Because you didn't take the time to read the statement. So what do you look for when you read your statement? Well, look at the date. Let me see, I think I have something here I'm gonna to talk to you about. Read the date. Were you there that day? Read the doctor's name. Do you recognize the name of the doctor or the practice now? The practice may be billing under one other doctor, so you may not recognize the name of the doctor who's doing the billing, but 
In that case, you know, look into it. Make sure you're being billed by the right provider. Remember, fraud is huge. Now look, you won't get a Medicare summary notice for three months after you take your service. Can you remember what you did three months ago? What doctor you went to? I can't. I can't remember what I did yesterday. So what do I do? I write it down. You have trackers in your bags. Please take the time to write down the date you went, the doctor you saw, anything else that occurred, the test you took. Any questions, write them down. Now, doing that alone is not helpful. But when you get your statement, you compare the statement to the calendar. Make sure you're not being cheated. It's your money. You need to, we need to protect Medicare. I don't know about you guys, but I love my Medicare. You know, I'm an original Medicare with a supplement and a drug plan. Yes, the premiums are high, but I don't have to pay a penny after my premiums. I'm fully covered for everything. You can't get better insurance coverage than that, you know? So please, we want to keep Medicare strong and fighting fraud, waste, and abuse is very, very important. So let's talk about some of the scams that we see in Medicare. You know, scams abound. And we investigate Medicare scams. And when we get all the information together, we then send it to the office of the Inspector General. That office is the office that oversees fraud, waste, and abuse in government programs. But since we lose $80 billion a year, we're not doing a good job, are we? No, we're not. You know, the problem with Medicare is that we don't know it's fraud unless someone reports it, unless there's a large pattern of abuse. You know, I, I'm going to go over the three biggest frauds in Medicare before I talk about the scams. Does anybody want to guess what the number one fraud in Medicare is? What? That's number three. Double billing, he said. Number three. Number one is billing for services never provided. So if you don't read your statement, you're not going to see this bill and you're not going to report it. Why it's so important to read the statements. Number two is upcoding. Anybody know what upcoding is? Yeah, some of you are shaking your head. Let's say I fall and I hurt my wrist. And I go to my doctor. He says, Charles, I think the wrist is broken, but, you know, it's so swollen. I really can't tell. Go get an x-ray. So I go get my x-ray. But when they bill Medicare, they don't bill for an, an x-ray. They bill for a CAT scan. They upcode. They bill for an MRI. They upcode. Because the higher the value code, the more money they make which is another reason why you have to read your statements carefully and see. Now, look, I don't expect you to memorize the codes, but if you see a code on there and it looks strange and you don't remember having that service, look up the code. You all know how to use a computer. Look up the code and see if they're billing properly. And number three, double billing. Now, I always get the question, come on, Charles. Medicare must know it's double billing. It's the same bill. Here's the problem. What if you have a chronic condition that requires the same service over and over again? Medicare doesn't know that's fraud. They think you're being treated. You have to report it. So let's ask, well, where do you report it to? So let's say you look at your statement, you're suspicious. What would be the first thing you would do? Anybody? Nobody wants? Come on, this is the old guard. Speak up. Call yes, call the doctor's office and say, hey, you made a mistake. You never gave me an EKG and you're billing improperly. Did you ever try to call a doctor's office and speak to the doctor? 
Forget about it. You're lucky if you speak to the billing department. And they'll just say, hey, it's in the records. We build. Okay? Secondly, you can call Medicare. 1-800-MEDICARE, report the fraud. But if you're in New Jersey, we have a partnership with Medicare. As a matter of fact, I have a unique ID. I can call up Medicare and get any information about you guys that I can because I have a special telephone number and I could talk to a special representative. Okay? But Medicare doesn't know it's double billing. You have to report it. If you don't report it, they will get away with it. And it's our money. It's our dollars. And I don't know about you, but I, I hope to live a lot longer, and I want Medicare to be strong and viable, you know, in 1931, and, I mean 2031 and beyond. So please, do whatever we can to fight Medicare fraud, waste, and abuse. So you call up Medicare. Medicare is going to say to you, call up Charles Clarkson at the Senior Medicare Patrol in New Jersey. We have a partnership. They'll refer you to my office. Now, we're free. We don't cost anything. We're federally funded. We have 30 volunteers. We assign a volunteer to your case, and that volunteer's job is to help fight the fraud, waste, and abuse, get the money back to Medicare, or if you paid out of pocket, get the money back to you. And they also come out and do presentations like this one. So please call us if you belong to any other group, churches, synagogues. We'd love to come out and do a presentation. Now let's talk about the scams that we are seeing. Very strange one that's come up recently. Urinary catheters are being sent to people. Urinary catheters, whoever came up with that was brilliant. So they're being sent because a lot of these companies who are durable medical equipment suppliers have your Medicare number. And guess what? Those numbers are sold. Maybe pennies on the dollar, but it adds up. You get urinary catheters living in the mail. What do you do with them? Well, remember the rule in most states. If something is sent to you unsolicited, you could do anything you want with it. First, you're not paying anything of the bill. You should report it to Medicare. You should report it to my office because then we keep track and we have a database of all these frauds. And if we have to, we investigate the case and report it to the office of the inspector general. So please, please, if you get any of things like that, and not only is it urinary tra uh, catheters, what we're seeing, braces, neck braces, knee braces, ankle braces, back braces, being taken off the shelf, cheap stuff, mailed to people, not solicited, not medically necessary, not approved by their doctor. So when people call me and tell me this, I say, give it to charity if you don't need it. Throw it away. Save it for when you do need it. You know, it's really, it's a, there's a lot we can do, but we have to be an advocate for ourselves. Another scam that we see a lot of is genetic testing. You get an email, a text, a phone call. Your doctor, I'll put that in quotes, your doctor has ordered this test for you so he can help you treat you better. Scam. First of all, genetic testing is rarely covered by Medicare. There are some exceptions. Let's say you were being treated for cancer and your doctor said, you know, the treatment protocol we're using is not working. Let's do a genetic test to see if there are any markers that will help us determine a better way to treat you. Well, that test, if it's not medically necessary and not approved by the doctor, won't be covered by Medicare, and you're on the hook for nine to $13,000. Yeah, it's an expensive test. And then you are basically get a bill from the lab that did the test 
and they go after you. They'll send it to a collection agency. We can help with that. We can help fight the fraud, waste, and abuse. So as you can see, there are a lot of things you can do to fight Medicare fraud, waste, and abuse. It's our money. It's our Medicare. And you know, you've uh, all the Republicans in the room, please shut their ears. Okay, you know, this commission that they've set up to look into Social Security and Medicare, I'm really frightened about, you know, because I don't know. And then you have your answer, right? What was that? Anybody? (laughs) Oh, by the way, feel free to interrupt me at any time with any questions. Let's make this yes. There is already a whistleblower compensation system for Medicare. Unfortunately, nobody knows about it. Okay. I have a few questions at the end so that everybody can hear it through the system. Oh, really? You don't want me to make it interactive? Oh, come on, Mark. What's going on? Oh, the people online? He asked, why don't you adopt the whistleblower compensation program? And I told him there's already a whistleblower compensation program. But it's not very, very rich. You know, if you were an independent person working for a company and you were a whistleblower case, well, then you might get 15 to 20% of the amount recovered. Now, that's, we've had very large whistleblower cases in Medicare. But if you just call Medicare and ask for a whistleblower, you know, you're not going to get much money. And I doubt even if Medicare is going to follow up properly. Yeah, I'm sorry. Someone already is asking a question, Mark. Is that okay if I take it? <laughs> How do you stop the Medicare robocalls? That's ah. Yeah, all I do is block the number. It usually comes from the, and sometimes the names will appear on, a, on the ID. Sometimes yeah. they won't. I was going to talk about far, I know. I, by the way, I wish I had a good answer for you. There is no good answer to stop robocalls. And by the way, most fraud occurs on the telephone. So I have a word of advice for you. If you have a pad that tells the number that's calling and you don't recognize the number, never pick up the phone. And I mean never. Now, in my house, we have cell phones, my wife and I, but we also still have a landline because my wife insists on having And the phone rings. I don't even bother listening to it. First of all, 99% of the calls are for her. You know, it's true. And... I let my answering machine be my intermediary. And then I determine if it's fraudulent or not. And by the way, even if you think it's legitimate, never use the number they provide you. You look it up. Now, a word of advice. Social Security, the IRS, and Medicare will never call you. So if someone calls you and they pick up, they say, we're from Medicare. First of all, you shouldn't have picked up. But secondly, you slam the phone down. Don't talk to them. Don't provide them any information. They probably know a little bit about you already. Remember, in today's world, all your information is online, right? If you want to fully protect yourself, never go on the Internet. But do you want to live like that? I don't. I never go shopping anymore. I do all my shopping through Amazon. Right? We all do that. I pay my checks online because it's on the Internet. I don't have to buy envelopes, stamps. Don't have to go to the mailbox. Oh, by the way, there's another scam that's going around I want to alert you of. If you are mailing checks... Do not put them in the mailbox. You go to the post office and you deposit them inside the post office tray because the latest scam is people are still stealing checks and now they have a system where they can just erase the name, keep your signature, and write the check to an account that they can cash it. Please do not mail the checks into your local mailbox. Bring it to the post office. 
It's very, very important. So I've talked a lot about Medicare fraud, and now can we do questions and answers? <laughs> there we go. Um, I think you said, and I'm checking this, that uh, we, we shouldn't actually bother to call the doctor's office if we see something. We shouldn't bother to call Medicare. We should call you and the senior Medicare patrol. Uh, and do you, do you, that, that sounds like good advice. Do you have any horror stories about uh, <laughs> people going to the wrong place? Uh, going to the wrong place, no. But, you know, I, I got a call from a beneficiary. He asked me if, if I have any horror stories. I got a call from a beneficiary who was in a senior residence, residential building. And he had gone to a party at the basement that was being sponsored by the Good Samaritans of America. Good. Yeah, it sounded good, didn't it? And they were gonna help you with Medicare. So you went to the party, and while you were there, they said, you know, Medicare will pay for a genetic test for you. All you have to do is give us a cheek swab. So the guy did it, most of the room did it. Then this guy called me up later and he said, you know, this group has gone to other senior buildings because I have friends in other buildings nearby. So he gave me all this information and we called around all the buildings and we collected about 25 statements from beneficiaries about this genetic testing. Well, we opened an investigation and three years later, I'm sorry to say, three years later, the three main defendants were in, are now in jail. And we collected $2.5 million. So we do do a good job and, uh, you know, we're free. Why not use us? Uh, do, when do you want to do the online question now? Yep, online, Ron Weingu. Joe will feed it to you, Walter. Yeah. Hello, Walter. Yeah, I just I had trouble getting unmuted. Uh, okay, um, how does all of this apply? Well, many of us have Medicare Advantage type plans, but we don't deal with Medicare. We deal with an insurance company. How yeah. does any of this apply? And uh, well, how does any of this apply? <laughs> okay, all right. Now he's talking about Medicare Advantage plans. Is how many of you are in the room are in an actual Medicare Advantage plan? Wow, a lot of you. Okay. Um, well, the fraud holds true there also. When you get an explanation of benefits from your Medicare plan, you have to read it carefully. Just because you're in a Medicare Advantage plan doesn't mean that that plan isn't being cheated and using your number and information to build a Medicare Advantage plan. So read the explanation of benefits carefully and report it to the plan, you know? And the plan is supposed to, supposed to, have a fraud fighting department that's supposed to help people with these kind of complaints. But again, if they don't help you sufficiently, who are you gonna call? call you. Thank you, you're gonna call me, the Senior Medicare Patrol of New Jersey. And we'll take on the case for you, but try to call the plan first and see if they can help you. Even if you call the plan and they said they will, they will try to look into it, you can still call us. We do have sometimes duplicate investigations going on. And, you know, people don't realize that we have a lot more power than you. Okay? If you went to and you called the doctor's office and you complained about fraud, Eh, they might do something, they might not. It's hard to get through. But when you call me, and I call the doctor's office, and I say, would you like me to open an investigation into your practice? They get very worried. And so, you know, and believe me, I've had doctors who said, what can I do? I said, refund the money. Great, no problem. And that's what they do. So we, you know, we are effective because, you know, doc, last thing a doctor wants is his reputation destroyed or lose his license. And if you look up Medicare fraud on your computers, you never have to worry about doing anything else. Just, you'll read forever. 
And it's amazing how many doctors lose their license because they're greedy and they want to make money and they're committing fraud. Doctors, you'd think we wouldn't have that kind of problem, but we do. Lots and lots of doctors commit Medicare fraud. Charles, yeah. one quick question. Someone asked for the phone number for your, your office. Oh, sure. Uh, our phone number is, our general number is seven, and it's on the brochures and the, that little treat thing here has both our numbers on it. Our general number is 732-777-1940. We also have a hotline number, 877-SMP, that's Sam, Mary, Peter, 4359. We also have a website, Senior Medicare Patrol NJ.org, and you can file a complaint right on the website and it'll come to me directly. So please call us. Now, the general number is at Jewish Family Services. Just ask for the Senior Medicare Patrol, and the call will come to me or one of my colleagues, and we can help you do it. Okay? And like I said, we're free. So, yes, Pat. Uh, you were mentioning fraud is $80 billion. That's per year? Okay. Uh, in your estimate, what part is it the bad guys <laughs> versus the hospitals and the doctors who are cheating? I hate to say this, Pat. They all cheat. So, but uh, Percentage-wise, I, really, I don't really know. You know, hospitals are a real problem because did you ever see a hospital bill when you've been in a hospital for three or four days? Has anybody attempted to read that? Yeah, it's difficult. It's long, it's coded. And one thing I notice about hospital bills, they add things that you know you didn't get. You know it. But just because it's a hospital doesn't mean they don't cheat. We see hospitals, doctors, labs, every component of Medicare cheats because it's easy. You know how many people don't bother reading their statements? This statistic I do know. Less than 5% of you ever read your medical statements. That's a lot of waste. And therefore, that will never be reported. And they get away with it. I'm sorry, that's all. I can't give you the, the percentages for the breakouts. Uh, the other part is uh, my sister is in a nursing home. And... I'm the person that I do all the financials for sure. and get the rebuild, uh, statements and so forth. And I look at them and I, I question sometimes because there's one doctor who put code 123, the other doctor put 124, and I notice, I'm assuming it's the same effort, same thought pattern, but one is $500, the other one is $200. So I get a little skeptical. <laughs> you um, should be. About 90% of her bills are routine things that I'm not told of. The other 10% is if they're major and they, they, I need my input or whatever. Um, and a lot of these folks in nursing homes have no folks paying attention to them. So I am assuming, because <laughs> I don't think anyone is always uh, truthful, that nursing homes and the folks that work in nursing homes that come in every day to see patients are not actually seeing patients. Oh, no. and, you know, there are, there are agencies in the state that oversee nursing homes. Yeah, so if it's a nursing that. home fraud, wasted, or actually more abuse, we see a lot more abuse in nursing homes than anything else, you should call the... Uh, the uh, you know, my that. last suggestion yeah, is sure. when I get those Medicare statements or where we call them, why don't we have your phone number in there and website <laughs> in there? Uh, we've you're, been, making, you're making the we've assumption been trying, we have to find We've been you. trying to get our... Senior Medicare Patrol, and it's a federal program. Well, who do you we, think who they do put call, it on the state? Who do we but, call to make that happen? Your congressman? I don't know. My, oh, that's congressman. Very good. <laughs> you know, we've been trying to do that for years to put the Senior Medicare Patrol, you know, numbers on. And there is a national Senior Medicare Patrol Center. They could use that number, and then the center could basically send it directly to the local SMP program. And by the way, every state has the Senior Medicare Patrol. I happen to run the one in New Jersey. On, online, John okay. Tomaszewski. Go ahead. Yes, hi. Uh, good talk. I enjoyed it. Um, I was a, 
I, when I first started Medicare, which was quite a few years ago, I got a bill from Detroit, Michigan with some Spanish sounding name. And so I called Medicare and told them about it. And like, I never got any kind of response that they were doing anything. And I was kind of disappointed. I would have thought that, you know, they would have questioned me or something else. And that was a while ago. It, do they follow up now on these things or is it just thrown in the pile of papers on somebody's desk? Yeah, well, remember I said earlier that they don't do a good job fighting fraud, waste and abuse. So that's why we like you to call us directly. You can skip the doctor's office. I mean, you should call the doctor because it's a mistake. Well, then you can correct the mistake. But if it's fraud, you just should call us directly because we could then assign a volunteer to that program. We have a, a lot of people who really know Medicare and we call them the bulldogs of the SNP. And they are really good at fighting fraud, waste and abuse and getting the money back. Yeah, you're right. We, um, unfortunately, you think they would do a better job when people called in, but they don't. And we've complained about that for years and I don't see any improvement coming soon. I'm sorry to say. Okay. Uh, j just a quick comment. Uh, for the sake of pe people who are at home, um, it looks like the, the, the brochure you have is very valuable. So I will scan it and I'll send it by email to everybody. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Or if you want, you, I could forward it a copy. I have this online. I could forward this to you. All right. You can do it yourself. Fine. No problem. Okay. Uh, there was someone online. Dr. You Dr. Said. Burns. Internet. Come on. Yes. Hi. Um, I just have a question on uh, if. Using the example you used about the uh, uh, sprained wrist, and the doctor says, I want you to go X, Y, Z and get a scan. Is he obligated to tell you if he has a financial interest in the place he sent you? Yes, he should let you know if he has an interest in the practice he sends it to you. You know, and that's also can violate the false. Should or must? Should. He doesn't have to. But according to Medicare rules, he technically is not allowed to send you to a practice that he has an interest in. If it's called the False Claims Act. So I guess it is illegal to do that, but we see it all the time. And you're right. Uh, you know, I mean, how do you know? You don't know. He might have a 1% share in the x-ray department of, uh, you know, a, a private practice, and there's no way you're going to find out about it. So, oh, is, isn't there a disclosure requirement? There, no, unfortunately, there is no disclosure requirement, as far as I know. Okay, so I like you. to say we we don't do a good job in fighting fraud, waste, and abuse. We don't. I don't. You know, we should be able to do much better. It's our money. Yeah. Um, quick question. Yeah. I've always had a theory in my mind that this is all about the float. Now I'm talking about the insurance companies, the supplemental providers. So if I provide, uh, if I submit a claim and I get back a rejection of that claim, what's happening is that the insurance company is holding on to the money, which allows them to collect the float on hundreds of billions of dollars. That's correct. Now, is that, is there any truth to that? that okay, let's, let's talk about Medicare Advantage plans and the insurance company that sells them. You know, the Medicare Advantage plan market is the most profitable segment in Medicare. Look up the profit and loss statements of some of the major insurance companies that offer huge Medicare Advantage plans. They make billions, okay? Now, this is what we're seeing in Medicare Advantage plans. And I know a lot of you have oh, a Medicare you. Advantage plans, but a lot of hospitals and doctors are now saying we're no longer gonna take members of a certain Medicare Advantage plan because the plan is not paying quickly enough, is not paying us enough money for our services, and is denying coverage or getting prior authorization. So remember, if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to go to a network, right? Network of doctors, network of hospitals, network of labs. So we are now seeing more and more problems with Medicare Advantage plans because of all these complaints. So if it works for you, great. Just be aware that Medicare Advantage plans are starting to see some cracks because they're not providing sufficient money to the doctor's practices or the hospital. And some of the hospitals just say, 
we're not going to bother with your plan anymore. We won't take. And that could mean a hospital with a thousand Medicare Advantage plans participants no longer willing to go or can go to that hospital and being turned down. So it's a real, real issue going forward. And uh, I hope your Medicare Advantage plan works. You see, the reason I never joined the Medicare Advantage plan is because I didn't want the plan to tell me what doctor I could go to, what hospital I can go to. If I'm an original Medicare, I could go to any doctor that accepts Medicare. Most hospitals across the country accept Medicare. So I could travel anywhere in the United States. With your Medicare Advantage plans, you may not get the coverage if you travel outside the jurisdiction of the plan. So just reminding you to be aware of some of the disadvantages of Medicare Advantage plans, okay? Any other questions I can help you? On, online, Walt Meisner. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for educating us on Medicare fraud. Um, you know, I, I looked up how much Medicare spends expenditures and they're almost a trillion dollars, so 900 billion, and you say the fraud is 80 billion, so that's almost 10%, and that's just what's known about yeah, it. it. Yeah, it is, eight, it is 10%, yeah. It's a lot of money. And by the way, just for your people, Medicare is the largest budgeted U.S. program in the country, except for defense. And, That's and, a lot of money. And, uh, uh, you know, before I get to my question, um, I, I do read the Medicare statements when my father was in the hospital and I had to take care of all, all his bills. I did use the Medicare statements to um, make sure all the bills were paid and only paid once because a lot of duplicate bills would come in and I would mark it right on the Met CMS statement, paid and what date I paid and the amount I paid. And I checked the date of service with the bill and all that kind of stuff. Um, the thing I wanted to ask about is, so when my father was in the hospital, he was in a cardiac ward. So, um, you know, the first day they did an echocardiogram. So they built it out three ways. You know, the normal one with color, with velocity flow. So it's built out three different ways. And then, the, and then they built for the second, same test the second day and the third day and the fourth day. Now Medicare allowed the first day, but not the second, third, and fourth. So yeah. my question is, was the hospital playing games with them? Did they really do the test? If I ask to, if I doubt he could tell me. Yeah, you have to understand. First of all, I don't I can't tell you if they really do the test. I mean, I would have no way of knowing. Uh, the reason we tell people in hospitals, number one, if you have a caregiver who could assist you, that would be great. But you know, a lot of us have busy lives. If someone won a relative, I know when my mother in law was in the hospital, her two daughters went to her every day and kept records of who came in, who left, and what test she took. But how many of us can do that? You know, we can't. So it's very, very difficult. And look, how do hospitals make money? Billing for services. The more services they bill, the more money they make, which is why you have to read the hospital statement especially carefully. You know, because some of that stuff on there is just ludicrous. You know, and not only that, it could be 20 pages long. And none of us want to take the time to read it. So I wish there was a better system, but I don't know of it right now. So I'm sorry to say it's really up to the patient to look at the statements carefully. And by the way, even if you're not sure it's fraud, but you have questions, call us. We're experts in Medicare. This is what we do for a living since my retirement. <laughs> yes. Am I on? Yeah. That's such a pertinent, relevant discussion. My recent experience, I went to my doc and had an x-ray. And I checked, I get the uh, EOB from Medicare, and it shows that they paid 80%. And then I'm expecting to get the uh, EOB from my supplemental. 
So that EOB showed that they paid the uh, the difference to the hospital in the middle of December. After that, and I hadn't hadn't seen the EOB yet, I start getting texts from the hospital, emails from the hospital that I owe this amount. So I go online for the hospital on the portal. And there's something where you can send the billing a message. There's a box that you can type in a message. Because if you try to call them, you'll be on hold forever, yep. which I did. I, I gave up on hold and I typed the message, told them the whole thing. Two weeks later, they're still sending me bills online. That was a small amount. It was less, a little less than $30 difference. But they kept sending it. And finally, the due date was the middle of January. I think January 17th was when that bill had to be paid. And even afterwards, I'm getting the same notice. Finally, I went on the same uh, portal again, and it disappeared. So it took that long. But basically, I think what they're depending on is that you're not even reading your supplemental EOB, and you're going to send them the check. That's correct. You're absolutely right. You know, <laughs> most people do not bother contesting claims. They don't. You know, so if you're billed after the fact, most people just pay it. Okay? Yeah. Which is why if you read your statements like your supplement plan and it said they paid that, well, then you know you have evidence it was paid. And what I would recommend to everybody is don't call the hospital. Write them a letter. Okay, and write it to the chairman of the board. No, really, I'm telling you, I get a lot more things done by calling the top guy of the plan and saying, hey, this is happening. And then I get a call, usually not from him, but, but his secretary. Oh, we read your letter. We're taking these kind of actions. So put it in writing, send it to the hospital. You can send it to the billing department, but also send it to the chairman of the board and the president of the hospital. And you can find all this stuff online. It's not a secret. You know, you have to be an advocate for yourself. And you're right. Most people pay it because they know that a lot of people aren't going to bother looking into their statement and they're not going to bother fighting the bill. Yeah, you want to get him first? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, my, my question is, um, we hear so much about socialized medicine in foreign countries, and we have some good and some bad. Do they have the same problems as we have? Or? Well, you see, it's different. In I have a, a cousin who lives in London, and we talk about this all the time. Now, the only real difference, now, they have socialized medicine. So what that means is from the day you're born to the day you die, you're covered. Okay. The big issue that he keeps telling me is how long it takes to get a treatment that's not considered an emergency. Otherwise, they, you know, he's living as long as I am, so I, think, I presume they're doing a good job. He's a lot older than I am. He, they're, they seem very happy about it. When you mention socialized medicine in the United States, people go gaga. And yet, it's already socialized medicine, right? Medicare is a social program but you pay into it. Well, you know, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's very difficult. I'm sure there's fraud in every program that pays out billions of dollars. And that's the only thing I could answer. Well, thank you very much. Miguel, online. Miguel, go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, thank you for your talk. Um, I just wanted to, as an aside, I'm a, uh, I'm with the AARP, but I I have a PPO, so I can go to any doctor. Uh, as far as I know, I haven't tested it yet. But right. uh, my question is, uh, you mentioned your case with the DNA. The guys are doing it. What, what were they doing with the DNA? Because I have concerns about that, especially since I'm a member of 23andMe. What, what, what were they? Yeah. What was the reason they were swabbing people? Uh, the only thing I know, look, I'm not a doctor, so it's hard, but the, uh, you know, they're some people because of their genetic makeup might not respond well to certain types of treatment let's say radiotherapy or, or chemical therapy so th that's the only re that's the only thing i know about the genetic test i know it's very rare and in most cases if you send in a claim to medicare and it's for a genetic test they're gonna they're gonna deny the claim 
okay? Because it's not medically necessary. So that, remember, Medicare is based on medical necessity, which is why you cannot get a facelift. You know, that has nothing to do with medical necessity. That's a cosmetic treatment. So Medicare only pays for programs that are medically necessary. So we have to all be aware. Look, I wish there was, I had better news for you. And by the way, a couple of years ago, it was only 60 billion. Now it's 80 billion. Shows you it's not slowing down. And what we are, <coughs> what we are afraid of now going forward is AI. You can get a call supposedly from your doctor's office. It sounds like your doctor, but it's someone impersonating him using the AI voice of the doctor. That could be a real problem in the future. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm very fearful that fraud is going to get larger, not lesser. Yes, Dean. Does, does Medicare cover you if you're in Canada or Mexico? No, Medicare does not cover you outside the United States. So I always tell people, you're traveling, buy a health travel plan or some kind of other plan that you can buy. Usually not that expensive, 100 to $200 that you could then be covered no matter what. Remember, Medicare will cover you sometimes outside the country if it's an emergency, you know? But that is very, very rare. Now, some plans do have travel coverage, but only in an emergency, like sub supplemental plans. I don't know about Medicare Advantage plans. There are so many Medicare Advantage plans, you have to look at your own plan and see if they cover you outside the country. But Medicare, typically, you're not covered outside the United States. Online, Mike Katz? Uh, yes, the previous speaker referred to uh, 23andMe. And I heard recently that a class action suit was filed against them uh, because uh, they apparently were hacked in a lot of their information about uh, the genetic testing of their uh, customers was compromised. Yeah. Uh, I, go ahead. I, like I said, I'm not a doctor. I know that, that it's fraudulent to do some things like that, but how it's being used, um, I can't really help you too much, Mike. The uh, question I had, though, is that uh, I look at my uh, EOBs for Medicare and my supplement pretty carefully. In fact, I keep a spreadsheet of everything. And one thing I have noticed, and I'm sure many of you have, is that uh, so many of these claims that get submitted by doctors or other uh, providers, and the amount submitted is way over what Medicare allows. Frequently, they're cutting down 70 or 80 percent. And they must know that. And I wonder if they deliberately... Uh, submit a, a ridiculous amount knowing that it's going to be cut down and well, maybe with the hope that uh, nobody knows. Yeah. You see, it makes no difference what the doctor charges. If it's higher than he could charge a thousand dollars, but Medicare goes by the code. So they look at the code and said, this code has a payment value of X dollars. We will pay 80% of that. So he can charge a thousand dollars, but Medicare says that service is only worth two hundred dollars as an office visit. We'll pay one hundred and fifty. We'll pay eighty percent, and then your other coverage will pay any differences based upon what you have. So it doesn't make a difference what the doctor charges, and they know that. So charging more doesn't help them. Now. From a financial standpoint, are there any CPAs in the office? I don't know if they can write that off or not, but it doesn't help them collect more money from Medicare. If you don't have Medicare. If you don't have Medicare. In other words, if they bill someone without insurance. That's true, yeah. If you don't have Medicare, then of course, if they bill you, that's your personal responsibility. And then of course that, and by the way, there's no law that says what a doctor can charge, nothing. In this country, a doctor can charge any amount he wants. Now, most of the time he's getting paid by an insurance company. They don't care what he charges either because they only got to pay him based upon their codes and their details of the plan. So, you know, it's a, uh, but if you don't have insurance, yeah, it's, it could be very problematic. Yeah, my question is related to AI you mentioned about being worried about the use of it, but I'm wondering how much Medicare is trying to use AI to go through all their 
giant amounts of data and identify this fraud. Uh, I agree with you 100%. I'm hoping that that Medicare will get better at doing this and maybe using AI, but of course the government then has to spend more money upgrading their systems. I don't know. Will they? You tell me, Jim. Will they? I don't know. Okay, but yes, we have to do a better job. We have to be able to look at patterns of billing and check and see if there are any fraud, waste, or abuse. John Tomaszewski online? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think you kind of answered this, uh, that they don't want to pay for it. But I always wondered, you get a paper Medicare card in the mail, and I always wondered why they don't, like, make it a magnetized link or, uh, you know, a chip or something like that. It seems like that would be a great way to stop a lot of the fraud. Yeah, listen, uh, that's, I, that's one of the scams I didn't mention. New Medicare cards. If you get a phone call and they say they're from Medicare and that you will lose your Medicare coverage unless you get a new Medicare card with a chip, it's going to be a smart card. And it's going to be in plastic. Scam. There's no way Medicare is issuing 65 million plastic Medicare cards. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> that is a scam, and that happens all the time. It doesn't just go in phases, but that happens all the time. So be aware of that, of that scam. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, since uh, genetic screening is uh, obviously of interest to some of the people here today, sure. I want to just give some information. I, was, I had genetic screening uh, for cancer okay. in a program at Sloan Kettering. Okay. And it My hospital, by the way. Pardon? My hospital. I go to Sloan Kettering. Oh, yeah. And it didn't cost me a nickel. Medicare right. probably paid it. That's right. Or maybe they had a research program with a with a grant, a lot of money or something. Yeah. So I never knew what it cost until today. And there are legitimate places. To there get are. Free. I'm not saying. Look, I said it's rare. You may, I mentioned cancer treatment as one of the possibilities. So in your case, either it was justified by Sloan Kettering and submitted as a claim to Medicare and they paid it, okay? Or, I don't know about the test, uh, the uh, protocol, but the, you know, your trial program, but any, I don't know. Yeah, well, that kind of thing. Well, thank you very much. Are there any online? By the way, I want to end this with a really good joke. You ready? Sure. <laughs> okay. A man and a woman live in Florida and they're in their 70s, and they start dating. After a while, they fall in love. And one day, they're walking into town as part of their exercise, and they pass a pharmacy. The gentleman says, you know, let's go into the pharmacy. And they go into the pharmacy. Man behind the counter. The gentleman says, oh, are you the pharmacist? Gentleman says, yes, I am the pharmacist. I also own the pharmacy. How can I help you? Well, do you sell ED drugs? You all know what that is, right? Okay. He says, yes, we do. What about walkers and wheelchairs? Oh, yes, we do. What about diapers for seniors? Do you sell that? Yes, we do. Pharmacist says, sir, we're a very big pharmacy. We sell everything. How can I help you? Well, this young lady and I are getting married, and we want to add you to our wedding gift registry. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We have Charles for doing an excellent job explaining all the Medicare fraud. The only question I had, I was going to come up here and ask you, have you ever heard of a flex card? in order to Medicare Advantage plans, you know, how can they offer all these additional benefits that you don't get in original Medicare? Because you don't realize that every month that you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, the government pays that plan at least $1,000 a month. 
If you're in a higher risk category, they pay even more. So how do you get people to join plans? You offer more benefits because they change the law as to what is medically necessary and what is medically related. So all these Medicare Advantage plans are now offering dental, hearing, vision, right? Now, in order to get more people, they're offering over-the-counter cards or flex cards that you can use for other purposes, <clears throat> sometimes $250 a quarter. Again, it depends on the plan. Every plan is different, and every amount is different, and what you could spend it on is different. Don't do what I did last week. I actually went online and followed one of those uh, teasers, and they first the first thing they asked me was my Medicare number. I said, well, I'm not giving it to you. Tell me, you told me in the uh, uh, online uh, version that you were going to be able to tell me if I was eligible by just my zip code. Well, my zip code is 07920. Now what is, what, how am I eligible for a flex card? Wouldn't answer. So where are you? So, Bolivia. I said, okay, <laughs> that explains that. Anyway, I appreciate you giving me the answer. Okay, for that, we want to stand up and give him a old guard salute from <laughs> Summit, New Jersey, the headquarters of used to be, there we go. All right. Thank you all very much. The orchid capital of the world.